Ooh, I'm feeling perky today. Let's talk about perks. Perks are stat increases that you're able to put on heroes, and there's a lot you can do with them, so we're going to cover everything in the video, but let's start off with how many different types of perks there are. Now, each hero can only have four perks once you've fully unlocked them, but there are 14 different types of perks. The bonuses that these offer are attack increases for each individual branch, HP increases for each individual branch. There is also ones for all unit attack as well as all unit HP. There is march speed increase. There is also gold, food, and oil gathering as well as world map collection speed, which is a universal gather that would work on anything, including odinium and gather load increase. You are able to get perks once a hero reaches five stars. However, you do not get the perks at five stars. You get the ability to unlock them, which we'll get to momentarily. You'll notice at the lower right-hand corner of the screen that I have four symbols, all with a lock in them. These are perks that are unlocked once you reach five stars. However, the hero does not need to be level 120. The level does not matter when it comes to perks, only the stars do. So once a hero reaches five stars, you unlock the ability to unlock perks. And you'll notice on a hero who has had their perks unlocked, instead of being grayed out with a lock, they're blue symbols. And if you go to a four star or lower hero, those symbols are absent. Once a hero has reached five stars, you can click on those symbols and it brings up this menu here and it shows all four perks are locked. You're able to unlock them with gems. The first one will be 100 gems and it triples each time from there. So it goes 100, 300, 900, ending at 2,700 gems. Each hero can only have four perks on them. Once you've unlocked the perks for a hero, it's time to start upgrading them so you can get those stat boosts. You can upgrade a hero's perks by using their specific shards or their corresponding colors universal shards. So for example, we're looking at Tywin here, so I can upgrade him with Tywin shards or universal orange shards. To upgrade them, just click on the skill that you want to upgrade, and you'll notice at the bottom you can either donate two shards at a time or 20 at a time. Most people swear by the 20, however, the one thing I will mention is if you're getting close to the finishing it off, Switch to the two so you don't accidentally over donate and lose some of those shards. However, you'll notice that I have 11 Tywin shards and if I wanted to do a 20 upgrade, I don't have enough. If I click that, it brings up another menu that allows me to turn my orange universal shards into Tywin shards. Now, keep in mind, if you turn these shards into a specific hero shards, it is permanent. So if you use universals on a hero to turn them into their specific shard, you lose those universal shards and can only use them on that hero. So only turn what you need into the particular hero that you're upgrading. However, I would like to advise against using universal orange shards to perk out your heroes with one exception. Allow me to explain. When you first start the game, your main focus should be, of course, getting two, preferably three orange heroes to five star. Of course, the reason for that is we all have access to three hero now. So of course, your orange shards will likely go to leveling them up. After you have three heroes to five star, your main focus should be perking out all three of those heroes for those combat stats. This should even take priority over upgrading new heroes, even if those new heroes are better. The reason being is you are able to trade perks amongst your heroes, which I'll talk about later in this video, and instead should dump every resource you have into finishing those perks. However, if your main combat march is finished, and done being perked out. You should not use universal shards on any other perks. The reason for this is instead, you should perk out heroes using the perk farm method, which I will discuss later in this video, and instead should use your universal shards to get heroes to five star instead. For example, when the new heroes are released, or maybe you can work on utility heroes such as Caruso, Diana, or maybe even heroes that are part of the hero bonds. Now let's talk about what the stat increase is if you manage to perk out your heroes. We'll start off with the combat related perks. So this is any perk that increases attack or HP. For an orange hero, it maxes out at 110%. Purple heroes, it's lower at 60%. And blue heroes lower still at I believe it's 12% for the combat related perks. The gathering perks, however, have a different ceiling. For an orange hero, it is 44%. For a purple hero, it's 24%. And for a blue hero, it's 4%. The gathering perks, of course, include gather load as well as anything that increases any kind of gather speed. The only other perk that varies from these percentages is the march speed increase. I have not perked out a orange hero for march speed increase. However, if it follows the same pattern that some of the others do, a march speed increase for an orange hero should be 22%. For a purple hero, it is 12%. And for a blue hero, it is 2%. Just as the percentages change for different rarities of heroes for their perks, so does the cost to fully upgrade a perk. 
as far as the amount of shards that you need to put into them. To completely finish a perk, for a blue hero, you're looking at roughly 30 to 40 shards. A purple hero, it's roughly 220, and an orange hero, it is about 440. The reason I say about is because when you upgrade a perk, you don't always get the same percentage. So for example, Bob here, I'll do a times 10 upgrade on him. You'll notice that the percentages are all different. This happens with any perk you upgrade, so they're not consistent when you upgrade them, resulting in slightly varied costs as far as how many shards it actually takes to fully upgrade a perk. Now, of course, when you get a hero and you unlock one of their perks, you may not necessarily get the perk you want. For example, Lady Zizak here has no use for tank attack. So you are actually able to re-roll your perks. You'll notice on the side, there's a little recycle button with a purple book. If you click that, it asks you whether or not you want to use a perk book. You can use a perk book on here to reshuffle that and get a different of the 14 different perks that you could potentially get. So you just re-roll your perks until you have all the perks that you want. However, I would advise not to re-roll a perk until you've managed to unlock all four of them. So let's say, for example, on Lady Zizak here, I wanted to get all unit attack instead of tank attack. I could re-roll until I get all unit attack, but it would be a much better idea to unlock all four of her perks before I re-roll. The reason for that, of course, is there's a chance that I may just unlock the perk that I want, in which case I can re-roll tank attack instead for air force attack. And I know that the last perk unlock costs more than a perk book. However, if you're going to fully perk out the hero and you're going to unlock all the abilities anyway, you might as well upgrade it instead of potentially wasting a perk book or several. Now, when you do go to re-roll your perk and you get past this menu here, it will give you an option. So it'll re-roll your perk and give you the option to keep the perk you already have or accept the new one. So for example, I have tank attack right now. Let's say I re-rolled to gold gathering and I'm like, well, I'd probably get more use out of tank attack than I would gold gathering. So I'll keep tank attack. Or if I wanted it for some reason, then I could accept gold gather. So it allows you to pick. So when you re-roll, you don't necessarily have to abandon the perk that you already have. You'll also notice that there's a counter. For example, mine right here says zero out of 20. Each time you roll a perk, that counter goes up. Once you reach 20 out of 20, it allows you to pick your perk. It'll give you the whole list of perks and you can pick the one you want. So if you got unlucky, let's say I wanted to get all unit attack and I just didn't get it and I go through 20 perk books and still didn't get it, on the 20th one, it will allow me to choose my perk and I can select all unit attack. And then that counter will reset back to zero out of 20. Of course, since we're talking about re-rolling perks, it would be very important to mention where the perk books come from. You can buy them from the Finance Center and the Item Store for a thousand gems a piece, so they do add up very quickly as far as their cost. While they can be found in other stores, such as the Legion Store or the Expedition Store, I would advise against getting them in here. One, they are ridiculously expensive, but two, there's more important things that you should get in here, such as class items. While it is slow to get perk books, the amount of perk books you need is relatively low, and you will likely be unlocking and rolling the perks faster than you are actually filling them up with those orange shards. But if you're looking for more perk books, my favorite event to get perk books from is the gem gift event where you spend gems and you're able to get rewards. This happens once a month and you can get perk books through here. Once you spend 20,000 gems, you can get five perk books along with some other rewards. The 30,000 gem mark also gives you another five as well as the 30 day march queue and that is my favorite point to hit. And if you have a lot of gems on hand, you can go all the way up to 50k gems and get another five perk books. So if you manage to max out that event with 50k gems, you'll get 15 perk books. And of course, some of those gems spent could be on other perk books as well, though it's not always necessary and would likely be better spent elsewhere. 15 perk books should do you pretty well once a month unless you're getting a ridiculous amount of orange shards, or you're perking out your purple heroes for gathering, which I would still advise slow rolling that rather than pour all your resources into it. Something else to consider before re-rolling your perks is you are actually able to trade perks amongst your heroes. So for example, something I did is I unlocked all the perks on most of my five-star heroes. Obviously, I'm never planning on perking out my Bumblebee, but as a Navy main, he has a nice set of perks that I happen to unlock with him. He already has all forces attack, Navy attack, Navy HP. All I need to do is re-roll the last one for all unit HP, and he'd be perfect for one of my orange heroes which if you go to exchange perk, you're able to pick any of the other five star heroes of the same rarity. So orange can only trade with orange, purple with purple, blue with blue. And then I could trade perks with them. So I could click on Amalia, for example, it says what both of their stats are, what both of their perks are, and I pay 1000 gems and it'll trade their perks. Now, when you trade perks, 
all progress on your perks stays the same, so you're not losing anything. If you have one hero with four perks and one hero with no perks, it swaps that as well. The one with four now has zero, the one with zero now has four. You can do this with two and four, three and three, three and one. It swaps everything. You cannot swap individual perks. It swaps the entirety of both pages, whether you've unlocked everything or not. So for example, if I were to switch my perks with Lady Zizak and Bumblebee, Lady Zizak would have four perks, Bumblebee would have one, and I would have to unlock, unlock those perks on him again. Now trading perks is what allows you to perk farm and is the recommended method for perking out your heroes after you've finished your main combat march. That way you can avoid using universal orange shards on perks. So for example, let's take my Tywin here. I temporarily have him with gathering perks, which I plan on re-rolling for combat related perks once I finish these other two perks. I could take my Tywin perks and trade them to my Bellevue who has 140 shards, and then I could put those into the perks. I could then trade them with Nimitz, who has 96 shards, and I could put them into the perks. This is a perk farm. It is generally done with the free heroes because you get their shards through premium and elite recruiting. You stack up their shards, and once you have a satisfactory amount of shards to justify the 1,000 gem cost to switch them, and then another 1,000 to switch them again, you can use those shards to help increase your perks. Something I do to also help me perk farm more efficiently is every elite recruit ticket I get, I always put in the same branch and that's Navy. And the reason for this is that means all the shards that I ever get from elite recruiting is focused on my Navy heroes, allowing me more efficient perk farms. I still have some other Navy heroes that I need to bring to five star that those elite recruit tickets are helping me with. But with my elite recruit tickets, it has allowed me to stack up about 250 orange shards between my Nimitz and Bellevue, which I can use for perking out whenever it is, whenever I decide to trade perks. Of course, the reason this elite recruit method is more efficient is since all my shards are focused into fewer heroes, I have to trade a set of perks less times to finish perking it out. If I have 10 heroes with 50 shards on them, that's a lot of transferring, where if I have just two or three heroes with a few hundred shards on them, that's a lot less gems that I have to spend to help finish out those perks. Now, of course, the downside of focusing all your elite recruits on a single branch is it does take the other two branches longer for you to reach five star. However, I do recommend people hyper-focus on a branch unless you're a super big whale. It's gonna be more beneficial for you in the long run and you still have premium recruit tickets that can help you with those other heroes. Or if you're really desperate, you can still use your orange shards because you can use those to upgrade a hero instead of using them on perks. I would also like to put some of your minds at ease. You do not have to worry about ever losing any progress that you've put into your perks. No matter what you do, no matter who you trade with, no matter what you re-roll, your perk progress stays the same. If I were to re-roll my food gathering speed, for example, and it turned into a combat perk, it would show 110% instead of 44%, and same if I rolled a combat perk down to a gathering perk. It, it takes the same amount of shards to get to those percentages, but proportionately, you'll always have the same amount of shards invested. So if you've maxed out your perks, you don't have to worry about trading, you don't have to worry about re-rolling, it is impossible to lose progress on your perks. Now let's talk about what perks you should put on your heroes. Now generally your orange combat heroes are all going to be the same, you're going to have all unit attack and HP and then your branches specific attack and HP. I'm navy so of course it's navy, but if you're army you go army, air force, air force. There are some people that like to take the universal heroes and instead they'll do all unit attack and HP and then they'll do two branches attack. It's fairly rare, but some people do it, but this is gonna be your normal, where you have two attacks and two HPs. Also, it should be noted, you cannot have duplicate perks on the same hero. So for example, you can't put two all unit attacks or two all unit HPs. Your purple heroes, I would only ever recommend perking out one purple hero for combat while you're leveling up. If you're army, it's gonna be Rambo. Navy, it's gonna be Simon. Air Force, it's gonna be Ricardo. Those are generally the best ones amongst the purple heroes. Kate Curry can be perked out for combat, but that's related to the Kate Curry trap. I'm not going to address that right now. So those three heroes are generally the only ones you're going to want to perk out for a main combat march. The rest you're going to want to perk out for gathering. And of course, once you've replaced the purple combat hero with a orange hero, then I would re-roll their stuff for gathering. Your purple heroes, if you want to perk them out for gathering, which is their best use. The cheapest way to do it would be world map collection speed, which is the universal gather, and then either food or oil, whichever happens to be the first one to show up because I do recommend you specialize your gathering marches. However, if you want to fully perk them out, I like to go food, oil, world map collection, and gather load. Now the fourth one, it could be either gather load, march speed increase, or gold gather. 
I like Gather Load because in Eternal Lands, it can help me gather with smaller march sizes, making my stuff less likely to be attacked. However, it's not a bad idea to have one of your purple heroes perked out with a march speed as their fourth perk, especially once you reach three heroes. So if you have Diana having a little extra march speed in there just for the utility of taking out Warhammers, Dark Forces, etc. faster, it's kind of nice. And since the fourth perk doesn't matter too much on a purple hero, it's nice to have that extra march speed. Your blue heroes should not be perked out unless you have a lot of extra perk books sitting around. I like to participate in the gem gift event, like I said, and I've stacked up a lot of perk books, so I didn't have much use for them. So I started perking out my blue heroes for gathering the same way I would my purple heroes. As I mentioned earlier in the video, one of your highest priorities when it comes to perks or even the game is finishing perking out your primary combat march. You should even consider it a higher priority than five-starring the newest hero. Because the way Top War goes, they always release a newer and stronger hero, but those perks are there permanently. You can always trade them to a new hero. Focus on your perks, get your perks maxed out, then you can focus on the newest and best hero, and just swap perks from an old hero to the new hero, and now you have the newest and best hero fully perked, and you're an absolute stud. But once you've fully perked out your primary march, there's a couple different routes that you can go. The most common and smartest thing that people generally do is they'll start perking out a second branch. Maybe it's whatever they're strong against. So maybe your army and you start perking out an air force. That way you can start taking on the navy that you were never able to fight as an army before. So that's always an option. If you're not up for that, something that's significantly less common though, it's something you could do. Maybe you could perk out Amalia and Diana for all unit attack and HP so you can take on those five-star dark forces in Eternal Lands once they get three heroes without losing many units while still getting the energy reduction that Diana gives and the boxes that Amalia gives. Or maybe you throw a march speed increase on them just to make the day-to-day -day grind of killing Warhammers and dark forces go a little bit quicker. There's always the option of perking out your Tywin and Gonzo since their exclusive skills are able to get a gather speed increase at level three. There's a few different things you can do. It just depends on where you want to take your account. But again, generally people are going to go for perking out a second branch. Wow, this video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but perks are very important and there's kind of a lot to them, more than you may think when you first look at them. So if I missed anything or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like while you're down there. Please check out my Discord link in the description below. We have a lot of helpful stuff in there like spreadsheets the community has made as well as up-to-date gift code lists. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everybody who subscribed and as always, have a fantastic day. What do you mean it takes me over 2,000 shards to bring a hero from one star to five star fully perked?